Gotcha. Hello everyone. Thanks for coming in at such short notice. Um, I'm Ian Stewart, the Deputy Commissioner for Regional Operations. Um, my colleagues, obviously, Steve Hollands, the Chief Superintendent and Operations Coordinator from South East Region, and the Deputy Commissioner for Queensland Fire and Rescue, Mr Ian McKenzie. Um, I'll make some, uh, when you're ready, um, I'll make some brief opening comments and uh, we'll open it up to questions from that point, if that's all right. Okay, so... <coughs> Everyone's okay at the back? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This morning at Kingston in Brisbane, uh, there was a terrible tragedy, a house fire which resulted, uh, we believe, in the, in the deaths of 11 people. The people who perished range in age from 3 to 47 years of age. Uh, we also believe at this stage that uh, there are two main groups of, of deceased who belong to uh, individual families, and there is one further person uh, who, is a, who is also related to one of those families. I wish to uh, place on record the condolences and sympathies of the Queensland Police Service to the extended families of all of those who've perished, and certainly uh, also to the local community. Um, I believe the community is in shock in the Kingston area where this tragedy has occurred. Uh, there is a significant support structure being put in place uh, to address the issues uh, surrounding the, uh, the community issues uh, at Kingston in terms of the outpouring of grief that's occurring down there. Uh, there are a large number of church organisations and uh, police chaplains have been dispatched uh, in the early hours of this morning to assist in that process. There is also significant support from the Salvation Army and a support centre has been opened at a Salvation Army um, facility in Barden Road at Sachs Creek. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the great work of uh, both the Queensland Fire and Rescue Service and Queensland Police in dealing with this tragedy uh, many of our frontline officers have been confronted with, a, with the terrible tragedy that's occurred. Uh, certainly there are large numbers of support staff now uh, working uh, towards the investigation which will uh, report ultimately to the State Coroner on the outcome of that investigation. Um, again, uh, I would also like to highlight the fact that there is a need for privacy for the families and the community in that area at this time and uh, our investigation team will be in place for a significant number of days uh, while this uh, investigation is undertaken. A major incident room has been set up at Logan Police Station and there is a forward command post uh, near the scene of the tragedy. Uh, we will be guarding the scene continuously uh, until the investigation is completed. Uh, we are happy to take any questions that you may have. Um, I perhaps I could uh, hand to Mr McKenzie in relation to that. Uh, thanks, Mr Stewart. Uh, in relation to the cause, it is very, very early days. Um, I was on scene this morning and, and the crews there described to me what they were faced with. It was a very intense fire, even when they arrived. So working with police investigators, the scenes of crime, uh, it will be quite a painstaking process to try and get to the exact cause uh, and it won't be something that's achieved in the short term. When will the house be deemed safe enough that you can go and recover the bodies? Um, the Queensland Fire and Rescue Service urban search and rescue teams have been working on site through the day, um, making the floor safe for the investigators to go in. Um, all I can say is it'll be as absolutely as soon as possible to try and uh, bring some closure to the families and the community, um, but obviously safety is the precedent. Are you still treating it as unsuspicious? Steve? Uh, yes, we are at this point in time. Are you going to be releasing photos of the victims? Um, I doubt um, very much whether any photos will be released at, at any time in the near future because those photos become the property of the uh, coroner in terms of the ongoing investigation, so it'll be a matter for the coroner at some stage. Are you 
Um, certainly at this stage, uh, I know that uh, some ages have been released. Um, I'm simply telling you today, uh, at this time, the ages range between 3 and 47. How many of the 11 actually lived in that particular premises, do we know? Steve? Look, there were 13 people there at the time. Do we know about this early stage whether it appears their household was asleep at the time or whether people were awake when the fire broke out? Look, look, yeah, we do understand that um, everyone was asleep except one person. Can you confirm that there were three generations uh, involved? In this? Sorry, look, sorry, it's, sorry. It's, it's fairly early at this point in time, but that's our understanding. I know the survivors give me any indication of how they managed to get out through the back window or where they were? Uh, two got out through windows and uh, one person was already outside. Which room they they uh, one got out uh, from a window at the front of the premises and another got out uh, from a window at the side. Um, were they um, of the opinion that there were, were there other people trying to escape behind them once they left or did they not know where the other families were at the time? I think ultimately the investigation will look into all of those facts. Um, this is very, very early days and you can just imagine how traumatised yeah. those, those three survivors are. Um, so whilst there has been some preliminary uh, inquiries made with them, obviously uh, a more fulsome investigation will be required. Given the extent of the fire that broke out, was there any danger to neighbours on either side of the property? Um, certainly the intensity of the fire did cause some super, um, superficial damage to neighbouring properties and that was the, the focus of the crews uh, once they realised obviously that rescue was not an option to protect the properties on either side. Uh, and that's what they set about doing. Do we know why the fire was so intense? There was some mention of gas bottles maybe? Uh, certainly at the side of the premises there were four large domestic gas cylinders all connected to the house and all of them were involved in the fire so that added to the problems. There was also two vehicles that were well involved in fire in the front and the side, um, all of which posed um, problems and risks to the firefighters. Can I just clarify, um, you're saying that 13 people were in the house, but we've got that 3 people survived and 11 people perished, isn't that 14? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it would be 14, yes. You also mentioned, obviously, it was an inferno, it was an intense fire. How hard is it going to be to find out what caused this fire? Um, the investigating process will be a painstaking one for both the police investigators and the fire investigators. Uh, they do look for certain traits and things that point to where the fire started and then look in that area for anything that would have been likely to cause it and certainly statements from the survivors will be all important. Are we any closer to knowing if there were smoke alarms fitted in the home? And at this stage we're no closer to. Uh, I'm sure that will form part of the police and coronial investigation and that will come to light. You mentioned statements from the survivors. Obviously they're... Um dealing with a lot of trauma. Have you managed to interview them formally yet? Um, it's my understanding that at least one of those has been interviewed, but as I said before, uh, the uh, degree of trauma that's been suffered and, and the hurt and pain, um, obviously there will probably need to be follow-up in investigations and further statements uh, before we can be definitive. Um, uh, any idea of the injuries that they might have sustained? Any serious Look, I understand that one person has suffered a, um, possibly a fractured shoulder and uh, I think the others got out okay without any injuries. Is he hospitalised? Uh, he is at the moment, yes. Do you know how long, how long did it take for emergency services to arrive once they received that first phone call? Um, the first fire crews were on scene in under seven minutes uh, and the first call was received just after four minutes past midnight. How many calls did you receive? Uh, there were many, many triple zero calls. Is it likely that they're going to need counselling themselves? Obviously this is something horrendous. Uh, for, for all the emergency service workers on scene, certainly all the emergency services offer support and guidance to our crews. Um, in the first instance, we try and do that as quickly as possible if they would like, and that has happened already today, and that support will be ongoing. What will the role of the 
Um, obviously, uh, until the investigation identifies the actual cause, uh, we have to treat this um, as suspicious. But at this stage, we haven't got anything that is, that is deeming it to be suspicious. The major incident room is set up, as we do with every major investigation, to ensure that the investigation is uh, absolutely thorough and rigorous. Folks, unless there's anything else that uh, you'd like to ask us. Um, Ian McKenzie, yes. Deputy Commissioner, Queensland Fire and Rescue Service. M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E. -E. Uh, Stephen Hollands, uh, Chief Superintendent, Operations Coordinator, South Eastern Police Region, Surface Paradise. And Steve's been on site um, since about... Uh, oh, probably about five o'clock this morning. Yeah. So uh, he's been managing the uh, police response. Uh, as is appropriate in the uh, in the circumstances. I suppose we could say that we